If you've been watching my channel for a while, you understand I like to find topics that kind of split people down the middle, and the lack of USB-C on Apple's iOS devices I think is definitely one of those splitting topics. So the question does keep coming up, and I don't think it's a stupid question, it's fairly justifiable, why doesn't Apple implement USB-C on iPhones and iPads? USB-C has actually been fairly commonly used in Apple products, especially the MacBooks, for a couple of years now. In fact, a lot of people were curious why Apple didn't put USB-C on the iPhone 7, which is now over a year old. It definitely was in that timeline where lots of Android phones were switching to USB-C. I admit, on this channel, I talk about it a lot, about how I wish it was the last port. It's capable of transferring audio, video, power data very very quickly and very very efficiently and while it is annoying to be using adapters for USB-C now if more companies and more accessory makers all started implementing USB-C across all of their products there would actually be no adapters ever can you imagine a future where there's no longer HDMI or USB or audio jack it is simply all now USB-C which hopefully if there's a future where that's the only port we have to use simply there are just ports and cables it doesn't matter which cable goes into which port everything supports itself because USB-C can do everything. I'd like to see that future, but why, as it's been a year since the iPhone 7 and then we're now seeing the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10 use Lightning, not USB-C, why does Apple keep with this old traditional style? They've had Lightning since the iPhone 5. It's been five, six years now of using this traditional port that, you know, it works, it's reversible, it can transfer data and power, but definitely not at the efficiency as USB-C. And of course, wouldn't it be more convenient if we had charge cables that worked on our Android phones and iPhones, reaching that same port, same cable for everything future we all want. I understand that point of view. I really do. And there are a lot of times I actually wish that the iPhone 10 and 8 did have USB-C, but by looking into what the future holds, the more recent future actually for the iPhone lineup, as well as the amount of products in the Apple ecosystem that use Lightning, I think it starts to become a tad more justifiable as why Apple is sticking with Lightning for now. So first off, the iPhone 7 was already a very controversial product. I think it actually would have been too much to ask consumers to say, nope, no more headphone jack, and also at the same time say, nope, you can't use your old chargers either. See, a lot more traditional Apple people out there would have found the conversion from Lightning to USB-C kind of frustrating because they already have all these Lightning cables they've been using on their 6s and on their 5s. To now say you can't have a headphone jack or your old chargers work anymore may have been demanding too much for consumers and perhaps out of fear of too much change at once, they decided to keep with Lightning. And the next big problem is that Apple is already implemented Lightning on so many different accessories now. Apple Pencils connect to iPads via Lightning ports. AirPods charge via Lightning cables. Apple TV remotes charge via Lightning cable. Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse that pair with your iMac also charge with Lightning cables. So when you change it on one, the Lightning cable starts to get less and less useful because that conversion process would honestly take quite a while. And already there was a large amount of controversy just when Apple ditched the 30 pin connector, even though that was clearly inferior, it made a ton of nightstands and a lot of smart speakers suddenly useless because phone can't be plugged in that way. And you had this really awkward adapter that was very, very fragile and looked weird. If you tried to plug a 30 pin cable into a lightning port using that adapter, it did not seem secure. So I think Apple kind of wants to avoid that once again. And they're figuring that lightning now capable of fast charging can support the products Apple has it on for now, because in actuality, Apple is hoping for a regular standard of power and connectivity. They are wanting all phones to be powered by the same thing. They are hoping for a single standard, but it is not USB-C. It is in fact wireless. That's why you're seeing the new Apple Watch Series 3 being able to charge wirelessly with the new Air Power charging mat, which isn't out yet, but I think it's clear that also with Apple designing AirPod cases that charge wirelessly, that they're not worried about everyone sticking with Lightning. They're just saying that Lightning has been around for a while, and since you all have so many Lightning chargers and we're so close to switching everyone to wireless, as a standard, which again, Again, most Qi chargers work with Android phones and iPhones, which hopefully means five years from now when everyone has wireless chargers, the same charger that charges your Samsung phone. When you have friend or relatives over, they can also charge their iPhone on that. And that's when they can start ditching the last port entirely. Which if you're participating in my portless challenge, you already know how kind of nice it is to not have to plug anything into your iPhone. Now everything just charges on a Mac and then when you're done with it, you pick it up. It's very simple. That's how I'm seeing the future going. And I think the problem of switching to USB-C 
on the iPhone and the iPad. Is that that new USB-C port and new cable would only be useful for a couple more years until Apple actually ditches it entirely. And of course, there's probably a lot of you who have already commented below, Apple makes more money if they use lightning on their products. And they're all about making more money. Okay, first of all, yes, it is a business, so it does help Apple to have lightning on things. But if Apple did care about everyone using their accessories and using their royalty stuff to charge their iPhones or to make accessories for iPhones, why didn't they make their own wireless charging pad at launch? Why did they let Belkin and Mophie make the wireless chargers that they demo the iPhone 8 and 10 with? They kind of opened up wireless charging to anyone, anyone who supports the Qi wireless standard. If Apple really cared about money and using their own royalties, why didn't they make their own wireless standard that did not support Qi chargers? That way, Belkin and Mophie would have to pay Apple to make chargers that supported the iPhone wireless charging standard, and it would be separate from that of the Android wireless charging standard. So, of course, you can go the route that Apple's evil, and that's why they keep Lightning, but personally, I think it's more convenient for the users to keep Lightning for now, because in a few years down the road, we're gonna be switching to wireless anyway, so it doesn't really make sense to, at the very last step of the ported charging method, we change it to USB-C just really fast, and then get rid of it anyway. I mean, don't make the argument that Apple doesn't like USB-C. When they introduced the new 12-inch MacBook, they had one port on that thing, the USB-C port, and the headphone jack. I don't like talking about that. Which could really do anything. Deliver power, deliver video, deliver data. And that was kind of the first time a lot of people were hearing about USB-C. It was not the first laptop to have a USB-C port, but it was the first laptop to say USB-C can replace everything. The first device to have a USB-C port was actually a Chromebook, and it really only used it for power. Plus, it's a Chromebook, so what high data transfer speed do you need USB-C for? Apple helped design the USB-C port. So clearly, as they're putting it on all their new iMacs, and as they're putting it on the MacBook Pro, saying it is the most exclusive port, you know, that's all you need for everything. Apple definitely is in favor of USB-C. In fact, if you haven't noticed, the new air power chargers that are coming out next year are actually powered via USB-C plug. I think that's because you're gonna be plugging in your air power to a fairly highly charged USB-C power brick. That way it can charge two phones at once, or a phone and a watch and an AirPods, or three watches or whatever. Apple likes USB-C, okay? So I don't want to make the argument that USB-C is unnecessary, because it's definitely, I think, the best port. Lightning is clearly inferior, it's just we have so much support for it on our tech now, trying to change everything at the last minute when we're about to switch to wireless, and I do think we're gonna see that wireless implementation brought to all of Apple's accessories. I'd love to see wireless charging brought to the Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse, bring it to the Apple TV remote, we're already soon going to see it on AirPods and watches, and I'm hoping next year, even the iPad. I hope that shed some light on the subject and made you think a little bit differently about why Lightning is still on these phones, and be grateful, you know, it's a, it's actually been kind of weird for me. Since I've been doing this portless challenge, I have a ton of Lightning chargers I don't need anymore. I don't use Lightning cables to charge my iPhone. I use wireless chargers now for my iPhone, and that means I have like 12 Lightning cables that is basically just for charging my iPad. It kind of feels wasteful now, so. Switching to USB-C and having everyone buy all new cables and all new chargers right before you get everyone used to wireless charging seems unnecessary to me. Of course, you probably disagree, so let me know in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, and before I go, just a reminder for those of you who donate a certain amount on Patreon, I give credit. I give a little shout out here. And for this month, that guy is Zach to the future. He does a lot of vlogs, he talks about tech and movies and just kind of what's going on in his life and he's a small channel. He needs some more publicity. He's a likable personality. I'm sure he would appreciate any constructive criticism you guys have for him. So please check out his link in the description and let him know that Talos of Tech sent you. Thanks. And do, of course, check out our Patreon if you have any more questions about how to get a shout out from this channel. Thank you. Zach to the future.